This is great. It turns out that the colobot is frame independent. So if you write a program and you've been writing, uh, running a game in a windowed mode and you were having a frame rate uncapped, it might as well turn out that the program isn't going to work. This is great! So yeah, welcome to the moon. And I hope that this program with this stuff being read and set to another bot is gonna to going to work fine. This time I'm gonna try to do it on the fly without actually pausing it all. Because in all honesty there is not that much... Well, if you understand programming there is not that much to explain. It's basically a very linear, I would say, quote unquote, linear uh, program writing. Which is not saying really. Well, it's not doing anything that amazing. It's basically one function, perform one thing, perform another thing, then another thing, another thing, yada yada yada. And it's basically a very basic program in some sense, as in, you know get it anymore, find a free spot in here, then build a research center, find a power cell, go to power cell, grab it, yada yada yada, and finally research um, that or whatever, it's, fl it's for flying stuff. So yeah, there is that. And then we basically find titanium, build um bot factory get another titanium build a bot we read a program from a file and save it as a string there we go there is a string it's gonna read it until the there is we reach the end of the file and we're gonna save it uh, and we're gonna send it to a bot as a string because that's how this program this function works and it's for me better to do it from a file because then I can just write a program for my other bot. I can I can see using a save file if it works, and then I can store it as a save file and basically read it entirely and don't have to worry if I fucked up something with formatting, if all of the special characters are starting with another slash, yada, yada, yada. So yeah. This program is about to, this bot just finish its work with building stuff and send the code to this bot. Problem, problem is, well, problem, not really problem, it's just the issue is that I stumbled upon when I was experimenting with this is that the go to function, uh, go to and radar function are a bit limited, which makes me worried for Tropica, but yeah, first we have to reach it. So, basically, what's going, what's an issue is that first, there, if you do a radar from a ship, it's gonna find the position of a ship, right? Which is fine, but the issue is, um, with a, the issue with a ship is that it's gonna find a position which is zero zero for the um, ship basically as in it's gonna find to right the middle of it it's not gonna find the free space on it and the space function don't seem to work very well with it either so what's what I ended up doing with this version at least is I ended up um, suppressing an error which is for dropping an item which is gonna happen when it lands, come on there. see, it turns, it tries to drop it, it cannot drop it so it turns 45 degrees and now this is an example of what's happening with if you have like a different frame rate 
yeah, it's gonna turn 45 degrees to the left and then it's gonna try dropping it and it's gonna continue doing that until it actually can drop it, which is fine, good enough for this mission. And I realize my commentary must sound like I'm really depressed and bored, but yeah. That's my... That's just the way I talk. Sorry for that. Harsh hard. Um, also, I'm a bit worried now when I see it actually performing that it's gonna run out of fuel. But we'll see about that. So yeah. And there is another thing that I did, is that the go-to function is kind of limited and normally it would throw an error if it cannot reach the target. Uh, as in, normally when I have uh, three of uh, titanium ores on a ship, it would be stuck in between, or the bot would be kind of stuck, although not quite, in between it um, two titanium ores and uh, two power cells and it would end up going back and forth in between well it would end up going back and then it would throw an error so I'm basically suppressing this error and saying that if the distance between um, selected titanium ore or found titanium ore isn't is actually higher than 50 then it should continue trying the uh, performing go to function and actually it does now because I discovered it's a frame rate dependent also I added a 45 degrees turn on error so it doesn't get stuck trying to bounce be in between those so yeah this is uh, this is flying drill this is hopefully going to work out fine this what this is a program I actually wrote without well there is a go-to function but there, other than that there is no go-to function in it it's basically unless there if there is a target then we basically find find the closest target as then it checks the temperature if not then it sets the motor to zero zero uh no wait two there here it sets the jet in such way that it actually um calculates the height difference and if the difference is plus five then obviously the jet is one as in full um as in full for going up if the height difference is minus five then it's f then basically we're going full down thanks frosty that's very helpful and if the height difference and the rest of the height difference is solved by this equation which usually works out pretty well it actually works up works out better than motor function because this motor function actually doesn't work all that well and you're gonna see why as in if you see this turn it over overshoots it actually and then tries to correct it and again overshoots it but yeah it eventually finishes up working pretty well i'm only hoping that um because i wrote uh, because I wrote it with uncapped frame rate, I'm only hoping that the program is going to work out fine now with the frame rate actually being capped by VSync. And the reason for VSync is because I'm using a recording with our Media Live Gamer, and that one actually captures frames directly from display. So it, if you don't have a VSync, then you're gonna get frame stretching, uh, frame tearing, not stretching. Oh yeah, it works out pretty well. Also, here is an example of temperature being higher, so it actually waits till the engines are cooled off and it's gonna continue doing that. And once it cannot f find the target, it's gonna go to a spaceship position and it's gonna be it. There we go, mission done. Flying drill to. It's basically the same, as in not much has changed. Um, yeah, it's basically exactly the same code. It's only that this one is in the first person, because you're supposed to be controlling the bot. But yeah, um, 
Well, the idea is basically to complete the game with as little human input as possible, so as in have the codes pre-written and have the bots finish the level on their own if possible. So this is what's going on. Also I'm surprised with how the skybox is handled, because it's not handled very well, as in it's handled completely badly. I'm pretty sure the skybox uh, position is supposed to be inverted, as in the movement. Or supposed to be inverted when you go to the right it's supposed to be turning to the left instead of right but oh well it may be something for the first person and they may fix it because you know now the co the patching is done by community so yeah this is frying drill too and hopefully hopefully the last mission which is the black box it's gonna work out fine if not there's gonna be a cut in here So this is the most, one of the most complex ones. This ones I actually have to start manually because these are two bots at the beginning. There is overall not that much complex stuff in it, aside from the fact I'm actually using, um, I'm creating a class and an object for the class. Actually, do I create an object or is it static? I'm not really sure. Yeah, there we go. It's a stat It has static values. But yeah, it's like creating creating a class which is X, as in for exchange, not X girlfriend. That pun would be awful if it was intended to be a pun. And it basically has two flags in it, so the bots can kind of communicate in, in, in between each other. So yeah, now since the bot actually built uh, an orc converter and it's pretty much out of energy, this one is, is gonna start performing now. Yeah, and it's gonna go grab that titanium and it's gonna build a fine uh, spot. It's gonna build um, what's gonna build? It's gonna build a power station, so we can actually recharge these energy cells because we're really low on energy at the beginning of this mission I guess this is the part which I'm gonna speed up in post Once this, once this bot is finished recharging its energy cell, it's gonna find a position for the other bot. It's gonna go basically to that position and with go to functions, it's always in, be in behind of a bot. And what's gonna happen, it's gonna take its power cell, which is pretty much dead at this point, and it's gonna take it all the way to the uh, power station. Because if you actually have, um, if your bot has a power cell in its arm, then it can recharge that power cell, and you can use it to recharge dead power cells as well. It doesn't work for uh, your player though, so that's something you have to remember. But yeah, we're writing codes for bots in here, not for player. Although it would be kind of fun to program a <laughs> player movement. <laughs> so yeah, now that this bot has energy, it's gonna go... It's gonna convert it to anymore. And it's gonna, I think, build a radar, something like this. Yeah, there goes the radar. And this bot is basically going to go all the way to a found black box. And hopefully it's not gonna stuck on this little piece. Yes, thank you. That's great. And it's gonna grab it, and then it's gonna go using my own function it's gonna go to a, a place on a ship except this place on a ship is handled with yeah with a pretty long function 
it's something that I actually wrote. I'll just find a space, no, a spaceship. I basically type in everything that could be on a ship, and then I check if the spaces are occupied, and if they're not, then basically, um, yeah, then it basically considered it's free, and it's gonna go to it, except. There's an issue with it, as in normal go to function cannot really get to that spot because I don't even know. So what I'm doing is basically I wrote a basic go to function which aims at the point and checks the distance and basically that's if the distance is like really low in 2D space then it's gonna decrease a throttle and this way we actually managed to finish moon. The next one is Tropica, and Tropica is gonna be really hard, I expect. And maybe some uh, place where I actually give up. But we'll see.